chairman we're live now chairman are you able to unmute your microphone Right, we seem to be having some technical difficulties at the moment with the with the chairman. Um, Nicola, is the solicitor for the meeting? Are you are you able to just uh, open the meeting, please? Yes, good. Am I off mute? Could everybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, hi. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Nicola Keating. I'm solicitor for Pendle Borough Council. So welcome everybody to this licensing committee. Please, may I have? Um, uh, a nomination for chair for this meeting. Yeah, there could be Sheila Wicks if she can get a mic working. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. We will try and assist the chairman. It looks like she is having some technical difficulties. So I think in the meantime, we, we do need to appoint a chairman to, to begin the meeting. Um, so are there any nominations for chairman for this meeting, please? I'll do it if you want. OK, is everybody happy with that? Yes, I'll nominate those we can. OK, thank okay. you. Okay, right, welcome everybody to the meeting. I'll go through the agenda and hopefully the chairman will be here when we get to the main uh, item. Uh, item one, is there any declarations of interest? Nope, okay. Item two, minutes of the last meeting. Everybody okay with those? Could I have a, a mover? I'll move them for you. Thanks. And a seconder. I'll second them. Thank you, George. OK, we'll go on to the main body then. The application for premises licence at Premier Notts Lane Convenience Store, Notts Lane Cone. Um, right. Do, do we start by uh, the licensing officer first? If Chair, if you want to read out the procedure, I um, think um, the clerk, um, so the clerk did submit that earlier just for to read out, just so everybody knows what the procedure is. That that would probably be helpful if that's okay. Would be if I had it. Do you want to read it out for us, Nicola? Because I haven't got it. Okay, I will do. I'll just put it on my screen. So. Um, can everyone still hear me if I read this out? Mm -hmm. um, so the procedure is we've had the appointment of the chair. We've gone through the previous minutes. Um, if we'll first do introductions and formalities to establish who everybody is that's present at the committee at the this committee meeting, and then following that we will ask the licensing manager to confirm that all interested parties have been notified of the hearing. If there are any interested parties not present, if so, have they been given notice that they intend to attend the hearing? Then invite representations from both parties and the committee to determine whether it is in the public interest for the application to proceed in their absence or if it should be adjourned. Now, the chair um, or myself will outline the procedure, which is what I'm doing now. First, the licensing officer will present the report. After that, each party present in turn will make their representation. That will start with trading standards to the police and any objectors. 
followed by the license holder. When trading standards stroke police, any objectors have given their representation, the chair will then ask each party in turn if they have any questions. Committee members will then be asked by the chair if they have any questions, and this procedure will be repeated for each responsible authority. And then there is the same opportunity for the licence holder to present their case, and other parties will be asked by the chair in turn if they have any questions, and then members will be asked if they have any questions. When all the questioning has finished, each party Sorry, my apologies, sorry, my screen has disappeared. When all the questioning has finished, each party in the same order has the opportunity to sum up their case. At this point, no new evidence may be introduced. It's simply a summary of what has already been said. And at the end of the summing up, the committee will then retire into a private session with myself as legal advisor and the clerk who will be taking minutes to make its decision. Is there any questions on this before we do the formalities of introducing everybody who's here? No, I don't think so. Um, I, I see Sheila's back. Are you able to chair the meeting, Sheila? I understand at the moment she can hear, um, but she's not able to speak. She's having some technical difficulties. OK, then. OK, well, we'll carry on then. Um, if we can introduce ourselves, I don't know, I'm going to do this on screen, uh, but uh, my name's Rosemary Carroll. I'm the ward councillor for Earbay. Um, go to the next one. I've got Colin. Morning. Colin Carter, ward councillor for Earbay as well. Uh, Linda. Lynn Crossley, ward councillor for Barrowford. Uh, David Lawson. Yes, good morning. David Lawson, Donald Rayson Newton. I'm representing Jenna Rigby, the applicant. OK, thank you. Uh, Emma Barker. Good morning, everyone. Observe the proceedings. OK. Uh, George. George Adam, uh, Wolverton Councillor. Uh, Gary Hennigan. Yeah, Gary Hannigan, Sergeant Priest Division. Thank you. Uh, Sam McConnell. Yeah, good morning. Sam McConnell representing Lancashire County Council Trading Standards. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Molly Wigan. Hi, I'm also here to observe the proceedings. Okay. Um, Ali Majahad. Hi there. Um, licensing Administration Officer. Thank you. Uh, Nicola Keaton. Hi, good morning, everybody again. Nicola Keaton, I'm Solicitor for Pendle Borough Council. Uh, Lynn Rowland. Yeah, I'm, I'm Lynn Rowland, the Committee Administrator. Uh, Iqbal Wahid. Roger Iqbal, uh, Licensing Officer, mm -hmm. Pendle Borough Council. Thank you. Uh, Jane Watson. Um, hi, everybody. I'm just working in the background today to help people online. OK. And we have Sheila Wicks, who is the current chairman of licensing. Um, I can now hear. I can now unmute. I've unmuted. All right. Great. Yeah. I'll, Thank just you, finish, I'll just finish going through the introductions and I'll hand it back to you. Uh, Yvonne Tennant. Hi, um, Yvonne Tennant. Uh, ward councillor for Southfield. Thank you. Okay, if Sheila can hear, uh, I can hand the meeting back to Sheila now. All right. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Okay. Uh, let's see where have we got to. We've got past the formalities. Um, and the introductions. We've done the minutes. Yeah. So item three, uh, could the licensing manager confirm all interested parties have been notified of the hearing? Uh if there are any parties that are interested not present and have they been given notice they intend to attend the hearing. Uh, so could I hear from our licensing manager? Yeah, uh, licensing officer. Yeah, uh, both parties have been notified and both parties are present. Right, okay, yeah. 
Right, in that case, item four, uh, could our legal officer outline the procedure, please? Um, I've done that already, Chair. Yeah, that was what I, you may, I'm not sure you may not have heard that, but yeah, I read that out earlier yeah. on, unless you right. want me to clarify yeah. anything on that. Yeah, right. Okay. So, first of all, uh, could I invite Trading Standards to uh, say their piece? Yes, Chair. Thanks very much. Uh, Sam McConnell, Trading Standards at Lancashire County Council. Um, it is a simple argument that we have uh, at this particular uh, hearing is that uh, Jenna Rigby uh, is, is linked to a, an appeal at the Magistrates Court in relation to these premises whereby she represented herself at the original licence review hearing which has been, which the licence was revoked and there has been appeal, uh, an appeal gone in and I think that um, as far as the public interest is concerned um, we need to uh, consider the judgment of the magistrates' court uh, before any any specific um, decision can be made by the panel. Uh, I know that the the adjournment uh, is due to be heard or uh, it's due to be heard again on uh, July the first. So there's not that much um, of a um, gap between today and the matter being resolved at the magistrates' court. The the linked matter being resolved. And the magistrates' court. Okay, thank you. Uh, have councillors any questions for uh, the officer? Yeah. Has the applicant any questions? Yes, I do. Yes, I'm I'm the solicitor for the applicant. Um. <clears throat> If I'm correct in thinking then, Mr McConnell, your representations today are just simply to adjourn this hearing. Is that right? Yeah, because of the, the ongoing matter through the Magistrates Court, which directly affects Jenna Rigby and these premises. Well, with respect, that's not a relevant representation. A representation today for the purposes of this hearing is to determine whether or not Miss Rigby should be the holder of a premises license. It's not an application to adjourn, otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here this morning dealing with an application. I think, is it section 11, public interest? The committee can adjourn if there is a public interest matter. There is nothing to prevent, and would you agree with this, there's nothing to prevent an application being made to the council and the court at the same time. Well, I think that's what I've just suggested. Let the court resolve the matter that's just been adjourned. And on the 1st of July, then this matter can be resolved um, and the licence can be granted or not. Well, I'll deal with that in submission, but that is not a relevant representation for the purpose of today. Mm. There is nothing, and the court have confirmed on a previous occasion, there is nothing to prevent either application being heard at different times and one or other taking precedence. Chair, would you like me to add something in here as, as legal advisor to the committee? Yes, please. Yes, um, Chair and committee members. I, I believe that um, my friend Mr Lawson is correct that there's nothing to stop an applicant from submitting um, an application as she's done in this case for a premises licence. It is correct that there is an appeal at the moment before the magistrate's court, but there isn't anything to stop Miss. Um, Rigby submitting this current application which she's done and it is appropriate that those who've made representations in respect of the current application for premises license which is before you which is particularly trading standards and the police make those representations afresh today um, to um, in order for Miss Rigby to have a fair hearing and for you as committee members to be able to deliberate on those representations. Okay. Thank you. Um, our next uh, party will be uh, the, who's um, representing chair, the police. Chair, please, I think probably best to go back to, um, if I may um, interject, to go back to trading standards to ask them to submit, um, to talk you through the representations that they made um, pertaining to this application. Yes, OK. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. OK, Chair. Um, the, well, I, I can read you through the state um, the 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 statement uh, relating to the appeal hearing, 
But um, given the conversations that have taken place, uh, Mr Lawson may well object to that, but I'll leave that up to him uh, in his summary, if that's okay, Chair? Yes. Okay. Um, an application to review uh, was submitted by Lancashire County Council Trading Standards Service, uh, the, the premises, um, on... Yeah, sorry. An application review was submitted by Lancashire County Council Trading Standards Service on the grounds that the licensing objective related to the protection of children from harm was not observed at Premier Convenience Store Unit 1, Colm Works Mill, Knox Lane in Colm. Lancashire County Council Trading Standards Service believe that the premises license holder, Sarah Hussain, and designated premises supervisor, Rosina Akhtar, at the time of the review have been in place since August 2014. From March 2017, this service had received two complaints in relation to the Premier Convenience supplying, supplying alcohol to underage children. As a result, three test purchases have been attempted, resulting in two sales of alcohol to children. The details of those the training standard service involvement at these premises is listed below. On the 6th of March 7, 2017, Lancashire Training Standard Service received a complaint that alcohol is being supplied to children under the age of 18 years. On the 13th of March 2017, a letter was sent to the premise to inform them that an allegation of underage sales of alcohol had been made, instructing them of their responsibility under the Licensing Act 2003 and directing them to advice in relation to age verification policies. In April 2017, a test purchase resulted in the sale of alcohol to a 14-year-old child. On the 28th of April 2017, a test purchase of alcohol was attempted but refused. On the 29th of August 2017, a Check 25 letter was sent to the premise advising on due diligence policies relating to age-restricted products and directing them to online training regarding the same. On the 17th of June 2019, a complaint was received by Lancashire Trading Standards Service indicating that alcohol was being supplied to children under the age of 18 years. On the 4th of October 2019, a test purchase resulted in the sale of alcohol to a 16 years old child. The premises license holder at these premises, Sarah Hussein, uh, uh, who was also the designated premises super supervisor for another premises, PL, sorry, premises license holder and designated premises supervisor for another premises located in the district of Burnley. This premise also failed to test purchase on the same day as Premier Convenience Store in October 2019 and has since after appeal had its license revoked. As a result of these reports, I submitted on behalf of Lancashire County Council's Trading Standards Service an application to review the licence at Premier Convenience Store, Unit 1, Cotton Works Mill, Knox Lane and Cole. On Monday the 13th of January 2020, Pendle's review panel revoked the licence at these, at these premises. I noted at the review hearing that Miss Jenna Rigby, the owner of Knox Lane Store, said she had been managing the shop for a period of time in the absence of Sarah Hussein, the premises licence holder. Mrs Rigby also admitted at the review hearing that the behaviour toward young girls in the premises of her employee Brad Jonas had been inappropriate. However, even though she was aware of these incidents occurring since November 2019, she said at that hearing she had taken no action to resolve the matter. It's clear that there's been serious management issues at these premises to the extent that despite Mrs Rigby knowing about very serious accusations regarding one of her staff, she had not taken any action to resolve the situation and put at risk the health and well-being of vulnerable young people. Um, and I believe that these facts are stated and said are true. I understand that proceedings for contempt of court may be brought, etc., against anyone who makes or causes to be made a false statement in a document verified by a statement of truth without an honest belief in its truth. Ooh. That's the statement that I have submitted, Chair, in relation to the um, magistrate's court hearing that has been referred to earlier on in this hearing. Okay, thank you. Anyone, any questions? Yeah, I have. Um, when these breaches in licensing were made, um, were any of them actually during the time that the applicant was acting manager? Um I'm not. I'm not sure of that. Uh, I think um, there was. She admitted. I, I didn't make a note of the period of time that she'd been um, in super acting as the PL, the unofficial PL premises license holder, if you like, at the, the review hearing. Other colleagues may have made a note of that. Thank you. 
Uh, Miss Keating, did you want to say something? No, no, it's fine, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, right. OK. Uh, can I move on to the next witness? Um, There's questions from the applicant, I think, Chair. Uh, yeah, yes. OK. Uh, would you like to put your questions, Mr Lawson? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I would. Um, Mr McConnell, you've just read from the Magistrates Court papers, haven't you? The statement you made yeah, yeah. in relation to those proceedings that we've deemed irrelevant at this stage. You made uh, a representation on the 1st of March, didn't you, of this year? In relation to this application. This yes, yes. And in that application, uh, you effectively, I think you said at the outset, you have a simple representation to make. It's very short and brief, isn't it? That your objection to the application effectively is under the licensing objectives, protection of children from harm, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. That's, that's the one licensed objective we referred to. Yes, and uh, you've made mention of the fact that you didn't take any notes of the review hearing. Is that correct? Um, I did take some notes, but not um, to the extent where I, um, I I noted when, how long uh, Miss Rigby had been in charge and acting as the unofficial premises license holder at that premises. So you, you didn't you didn't take any notes in respect to that specific point then. Not that specific, but I recall I re recall Mrs Rigby saying that she'd been managing that pr particular premises. She'd been aware of the, and her, this is her words, the inappropriate behaviour of Brad Jonas, her employee, since since November 2019, and admitted at that review hearing she had done nothing to, up to that stage to resolve that situation. Right, so you agree then that you, what you're saying today is to the best of your recollection because you haven't got any notes? Because I... Yeah, well, it's, quite a, it's quite a pertinent point when somebody admits that they know well, somebody's been acting inappropriately and not done anything about it. Well, I'm asking you, I'm asking you a specific point about your recollection because yeah, my recollection. There, there, was, yeah. there was there was a review hearing, and do you remember um, how it was that Jenna Ribby came to that review hearing to make representations and the reason why? Um, I have no idea. I didn't know who Jenna Ribby was before the review hearing. Um, yeah, I. I I've never met her before. Well, do you remember that she came to the hearing and indicated oh, she was standing in the capacity of Sara Hussain, who had suffered a bereavement? Yes, I do recall that. Yes. And and do you remember what she told the committee about what function she was performing at the shop? Specifically? Not specifically, but my view was if she was managing that shop from what so she that's, was saying, because that's why she was there, because she was taking the responsibility of what had gone on at that shop. Well, let, no, she was there to stand in for someone who'd suffered a bereavement. And I put it to you that she'd in fact said that she carried out administrative functions at the shop. She may well have said that, but she also said that she was managing the shop because she realised that Sarah Hussain, with the, those personal, with her personal circumstances, was not able to manage it. And she, my recollection was that she admitted that Sarah hadn't been in the best position to be PLH or DPS at that particular property, at that premises. Well, she, she attended to make representations because the licensing committee on a review have the power to make certain uh, actions in respect to the license, one of which is revocation. And she attended in that capacity to make relevant representations. And I put it to you, she mentioned she performed an administrative role, such as paying people's wages, such as advising, such as attending to deal with this review application. But moving on, we've got a difference of opinion clearly in that regard. Would you accept that the um, since the review hearing, since the revocation, that there have been no problems from a trading standards point of view, and it's a matter raised by a councillor, in respect of these premises? I would say that's correct. Um, but I would also say that we've, we're in the middle of a pandemic and our, our actual capabilities to do work, as we would normally do, has been obviously uh, um, reduced dramatically. However, I accept, yes, there has been no issues, no reports, no complaint from members of the public. And would you accept that that's quite a lengthy period of time from the date of the review to where we're at now then? Um, 
Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I'm not going to deny it's, it's was it 14 months. I mean, I think that's <laughs> nobody can deny that it's time is time. But I will add that um, we have been in the middle of you know a very serious pandemic, and everybody everybody sat around this table has had has been affected by it. Uh, but what I can say is that we have had no reports from members of the public as far as underage sales is concerned. Um. I'm not suggesting this, but I, I, we, we all work in different ways during this pandemic. There's nothing to prevent you carrying out your objectives as a trading standings officer during this pandemic, is there? By making contact with people via Zoom, whatever, Teams, and speaking to people in the area or whoever about whether the licensing objectives are being undermined. You mean with other agencies? Yes. Well, I think the number of licensed premises that we deal with, Mr. Hawke, and all the Lancashire, if I started doing that with every single one of them, all I would do, I'd be on a computer 24-7. Well, you, you can't have it both ways, Mr. McConnell. No, no, You're no, suggesting no. that if, the pandemic is preventing if, you. If or... they had, yeah, because we then have to, I, we, have to, we have to focus on the, the areas of work wow. where we are getting those complaints. And I've just admitted to you that we did not have any complaints from members of the public in relation to this premises. That's all I can say. I can, I'm not going to say to you that they weren't doing whatever they were doing because we didn't know. And if there had been any complaints reg regarding those premises, we'd have looked to, if we could, on a, on a logistical level, try to do a test purchase or we would uh, have the multi-agency meeting to look at the particular issues there. We didn't get those complaints, so we would concentrate, because of our reduced capacity, on those premises that we were getting complaints about. Thank you. Um, moving on... Uh you're aware the, the licensing objectives you say were undermined by the sale of, amongst others, alcohol in respect to these two test purchases. And I presume you're aware that there was concerns in relation to the children's home, which is in close proximity to the premises. Yeah, I wasn't actually aware of it until the actual review, uh, because in the my review application, we were we were notwithstanding any other information coming in from other authorities, we were content with stricter licensing conditions. However, other information came to the fore at that panel hearing. Right. So you have had no dealings with the children's children's home manager? Nothing. No. No. Um, you've seen the current application, the application for the premises license, I presume. Um, I, I don't think I have actually. No. You haven't seen it? Not, I don't think so. No, I've not been sent it. Oh, dear. Um, Is there specific points in there you want to... Well, it's the specific point dealing with the protection of children from harm and the proposed okay. conditions. Nicola, is there any chance... Would you... Um, hi, Samia. You should have been sent that from the licensing... Um department as as as, as our oh, procedure yes. oh, that I read out earlier um, anyone who makes representations sorry, like yourselves and the police should have been sent it so apologies if you haven't um Wajed is online he might be able to share his screen with a copy of it um hand over to Wajed apologies um the the application was sent to all responsible authorities, hence we got the uh, representation come in um, from training standards in I relation to that. Yeah, I have seen it. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah, uh, just uh, further information about the store management. Um, David Lawson, I think, has emailed through this morning further evidence. And in that evidence, um, page seven, uh, Chair, um, it does state a letter from... <laughs> There's the milk, bread, Lisa. and the green. Yeah, so it's Lisa Baxter, isn't it? I think you're referring to. It's well, gone. Is that Lisa Baxter it refers to as the store manager they've had dealings with from late 2017 till June 2020? No, no. I think we'll move. I, I think we're jumping ahead. I was dealing with the question for Mr. McConnell about the licensing objectives. And there is some documentation that I've submitted today that I understand the councils have seen, which I intend to make representations about. But the, the main issue is that Mr McConnell's not uh, seen the proposed conditions to the licence that uh, Jenna Rigby has put forward. Yeah. Um, 
I have, but I can't I can't pick it out from my list of emails here. Um, which... Sam, I'll, I'll email it over now to you. Um, right. If Lauren should have it there, um, yeah. just bear with us. I'll forward it on. Mr. Lawson, have you finished with your, your questions? No, not yet, Councillor. I'm just um, waiting for Mr. McConnell to see the, the proposed yeah, conditions. I, I do apologise, Chair. It's, uh, I should have had this up um, before the meeting. Um, it should be with you now. It was sent on the 28th of Jan. Come through yet, Wajid? Well, perhaps I can. Uh, perhaps I can assist, Mr. Thank McDonald. You. Um, you've just indicated that at the review hearing, you were proposing conditions. You weren't yes. see. You weren't actively supporting a revocation. Not on our evidence alone. Yes. You know. No. Um, we were aware at that point that effectively the DPS, the premises license holder, was saw us in. Yes, we would have uh, included that. We'd included that in the review. Yeah. Um, can I ask what um, you would have suggested would have been appropriate condition-wise condition, condition -wise on a review? Um, I'll get those up for you, the, the conditions that we, um, we were suggesting at the review. Uh, do you want me to read these out? Because they're quite, they're, they're quite substantial. Um, Nicola, I think I sent them over to you. Yes, I think it would be helpful, um, Sam, if you do read them out for, yeah. for all the committee members. Yeah. Um, the suggested licence modifications, prevention of crime and disorder, the premises shall install and maintain a comprehensive digital colour CCTV system. All public areas of the licence premises, including all public entry and exit points and the street environment will be covered enabling facial identification of every person entering in any light condition. The CCTV cameras shall continually record while the premises are open to the public and recording shall be kept available and not edited for a minimum of 28 days with a date and time stamping. A staff member who is conversant with the operation of the CCTV system shall be present on the premises at all times when they are open to the public and must be able to produce, download, burn CCTV images upon request by a police officer or an authorised officer of the licensing authority. Any footage must be informed that can be played back on a standard personal computer or standard DVD player. And the second part to the conditions that we were suggesting to the panel at that hearing is the protection of children from harm. The premises shall display prominent signage at any point of sale at the entrance to the premises and in all areas where alcohol is located, indicating that is an offence to buy or attempt to buy alcohol for a person under the age of 18. The Challenge 25 scheme must be operated to ensure that any person who appears to be under the age of 25 shall provide documented proof that he or she is over 18, of age, 18 years of age. Proof of age shall only compromise a passport, photo card, driving licence, an HM Forces warrant card or a card bearing the past hologram. Challenge 25 posters will be displayed at any point of sale at the entrance to the premises and in all areas where alcohol is located. A refusal log shall be kept to the premises to record all refused sales of alcohol for the reasons that the person or persons is or are or appear or appears to be under 18 years of age. The log shall record the date and time of the refusal and the name of the member of staff who refused the sale. The log will be available on request by the police or an authorised officer of Pendleborough Council. The log shall be checked on a regular basis by the designated premises supervisor to ensure that it's being used by staff and each check shall be recorded in the log. There shall be a policy for the premises agreed with the police and Pendleborough Council regarding the procedure for the handling of fraudulent identification used to attempt to purchase alcohol. 
In addition to any other training, the premises license holders shall ensure that all staff are trained to prevent underage sales, are aware of and prevent proxy sales, maintain the refusals log, enter sales correctly on the tills so the prompts show as appropriate, and that they monitor staff to ensure their training is put into practice. Documented records of training completed shall be kept for each member of staff. Training shall be regularly refreshed and at no greater than six monthly intervals. The training record should be made available for inspection upon request by a police officer or an authorised officer of Pendleborough Council. At all times when children are allowed on the premises, information shall be displayed at the point of sale on what to do if there is a cause for concern regarding a child's welfare. This shall include reporting to the police via 101, the NSPCC on 0808 800 5000, uh, which is a free 24 hour service, or dialing 999 in the event of immediate threat. There, the conditions, Chair, that uh, we were suggesting at um, at the original license review, the license review hearing that has been referred to. And thank you for that. And would you agree then that those conditions uh, were as a result of concerns in relation to underage alcohol sales? And secondly, would you also agree that there has now been a significant period of time that's elapsed since um, Miss Rigby took over the premises? And thirdly, if you can answer all these questions at once, why is it that it's not appropriate for conditions to be put on the license now given that there have been no occurrences within the last 15 months it is in fact okay um the, f the first question is we would have been happy with those conditions notwithstanding any other information coming from um other authorities represented at the review hearing the other authorities uh, outline the fact that a, an employee brad jonas uh, was still working there and I believe he's still working there and he was the subject of the um, concerns as far as the children's home uh, was concerned and him uh, acting inappropriately in General Rigby's words uh, toward young girls from that home. Um, he's still there, the home is still there. So I would suggest maybe that um, the um, protection of children from harm objective uh, is potentially at risk with that, but, and he's still front, uh, front shop, front of the shop, so he's serving people. Um, that that may well be causing a risk to the health and well-being of young people, young children. And I think the third one, um, the fifth, the time frame, you say? Yes, yeah, so yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. an agreement that there's been nothing, that, nothing yeah, has occurred. Yeah, yeah, we have not received any complaints. Have you have you seen the documents that have been submitted on behalf of Mr. Rigby, Miss Miss Rigby now? in respect of what steps have been put in place over the last 15 months? The, um, I had an email from um, Jenna Rigby. Well, it, put, it said it was from Jenna Rigby asking for um, details of the Check 25 packs and whether she could get them and what else she could do to put, um, what else, what other things she could put in place well, to... Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think you've seen the documentation then. Were you aware that she has entered into an agreement with a service provider called Serve Legal? Oh, yes. That was brought, I, I, yeah, I was aware of that uh, from the court hearing last week. Yes. And were you aware that um, tests have, in fact, been carried out at the premises by Serve Legal? Um, I was I was made aware. I, no, I wasn't aware that tests had, actually had been carried out. I was aware that they would carry te carry out tests, and they carry out site reviews, and uh, that Jenna Rigby or the store have passed successfully. Okay, yeah, Jenna Rigby is paying this organisation to um, to carry out these tests and these reviews and this um, audit of the statutory responsibilities that she has, or that the premises license holder and DPS have. Sorry, Jenna Rigby is paying them, is, is this, that what you this said? Is a, this is a private company. Yes, yeah, it's a private company who, who similarly perform the objectives that are required under the Licensing Act. He's, he's suggesting that payment would some way... Not at all. I'm just saying them. that she's employed a private company to come in. They have no legal representation as far as trading standards is concerned. But would you accept that that shows um, a level of uh, and degree of responsibility from the premises license holder to ensure that the licensing objectives are achieved? 
I can't answer that question. How can oh, I answer right. that question when I don't know the circumstances? How the test purchase was carried out? Who carried the test purchase out? Who was working behind the counter? I, I don't know any of that detail. Right. Okay. I beg to differ. I have no further representations, Your Worship. Right. Councillors, rather. Thank you. Did you want to speak, Mr. Iqbal? Yeah, I was just, uh, just referring to Mr. Lawson regarding this uh, legal. Uh, you said they've had the recent one, uh, recent. Uh, test purchase done. Have you got any documentation for the committee regarding that? Yes, I've submitted it. We, we only had, I think it was just the the actual agreement. No, that's been submitted. And I can read from it here. There was a visit on the 10th of March, but it was certified as a pass. When was that submitted, sorry? It's been submitted in both proceedings. We had that, yeah. if, if I could make a comment there, I mean, the, the beg to differ was we go through rigorous checks and balances as far as employing people to do test purchases. I have no idea what the policy and process of this private company will be in relation to the people that they use who go in to try to test purchase uh, age-restricted products. Well, as soon as you made a point there, Mr. McConnell, that is additional to the proposed conditions that is suggested by Jenna Rigby. So it adds on to everything you have suggested at the review hearing and everything she's put in the application. Okay, thank you, Mr. McConnell. Mr. Lawson, um, can I now move on to the uh, representation from the police? Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to hear you. Bear with me. Now, who's speaking on behalf of the police? Yes. Is that is that better? That's a bit better. Yes, I can't hear. Sure. I'll I'll start I'll start uh, make, making my representations. If there's any issues, just stop me and we'll try and resolve it. Is that okay? Yeah. Carry okay. on. Okay. So I'm Gary Hannigan, uh, licensing sergeant for East Division, and that includes a borough of Pendle. And I have been in this since August 2018. So I'd like to take this opportunity to expand on my written objection for a new premises license and DPS at Premier uh, Cotton Mill Works at Com, the African being Jenna Rigby. I think we're all aware now that we find ourselves in an unusual situation whereby the shop currently has a license, albeit a decision was taken at a review hearing in January 2020 by the licensing subcommittee to revoke the license following representations from police, trading standards, Pendle Council and a manager of a local children's home. The decision was taken to appeal this decision, decision and 14 months on, the appeals has still not been resolved at Magistrates Court. We attended last Thursday and the matter was adjourned till the 1st of July, something that was sadly out of our control. By the time this appeal is heard, this will be 18 months since the revocation and will be 21 months since the failed test purchase that led to that review application. Despite our and our partners' concerns, the shop has been allowed to continue selling alcohol with no sanction for the poor practices and management that led to the review application in the first place. I feel that in effect, they are having two bites of the proverbial cherry here in desperation to keep a licence at the shop and it doesn't feel correct whatsoever. So as Mr McConnell said, at the time of the review hearing, the premises licence holder was Sarah Hussain and the DPS was Razina Akhtar. This being the case since May 2014. Uh, my understanding is that uh, Ms Rigby now has a premises licence to be appealed. I feel that Ms Rigby is unsuitable to hold a premises licence at the store and also to be DPS as she was involved with this shop as manager at the time of review hearing. We know that Ms Rigby has been involved with this store since at least March 2017. Uh, this is from our innkeeper records. Back then there was a meeting between the police and the borough council but then DPS Aktar and Ms Rigby claiming to be the store manager following concerns of non-use of Challenge 25 and an alleged surcharge of £1 to items for underage sales. 
recent purchases have been carried out of the store since April 2017. Uh, it failed on the 12th of April 2017 uh, during a joint uh, operation between police and Pendle Council. Uh, a 14-year-old girl, girl was sold alcohol by the shop assistant and the seller was subsequently issued with a penalty notice for disorder. Uh, but uh, the seller took the pay- option of paying the £90 fine rather than attending an educational course. Uh, subsequent test purchase took place on the 20, 28th of April, uh, I think it was 2018, uh, involving two 15-year-old volunteers, uh, but no sale was made on this occasion. And then another operation occurred on the 4th of October 2019 uh, between police and trading standards. On this occasion, a 16-year-old boy fought, fought four times a strong ball cider without challenge from a shop assistant. I was present at this test purchase. Uh, the shop assistant, who has been referred to as Mr Jonas, initially displayed a poor attitude to authorities and had to be threatened with arrest over a, a reluctance to provide any personal details. He eventually gave his details and was given a, a fixed penalty notice for the sale. When he was asked questions, he was vague around what staff training had been given, uh, the concept of Challenge 25. And for me, this is a fundamental basic for anyone involved in the responsible role of the sale of alcohol and shows poor leadership and management at that school. So one of the reasons for the test purchase on this occasion was because of concerns raised by a care manager at the nearby children's home who provided a statement raising concerns that vulnerable underage people were buying alcohol from this school. And the seller was specifically mentioned as working at the school and there were concerns that he was giving young people alcohol, cigarettes and cannabis. This individual is still working at the store which I believe shows a complete lack of judgment based on the issues raised. Uh, there are two specific incident logs relating to a Knox Lane shop on our systems. Uh, on the 15th of June 2019, uh, log 1118 refers to a female contacting police saying that the store is selling alcohol to underage kids, saying that her 14 year old niece was able to purchase wine the previous day. She also alluded that most kids visit the store around tea time and they sell alcohol to youngsters when the shop is empty. Uh, secondly, on the 4th of March 2017, log 1350 refers to a female contacting police stating that a 17-year-old daughter visited the store the previous evening and bought a bottle of wine without ID being asked for. And she stated that this is the second time that the store has sold alcohol to her, her underage children. So on the day of the Knox Lane hearing in January 2020, uh, neither Hussein uh, nor Raptor turned up. Uh, Ms Rigby did turn up and spoke. Uh, on behalf of the store uh, in position of manager or, as Mr Wilson may have suggested, uh, admin assistant. Uh, to say that she was unconvincing is an understep to reinforce my suggestion that the best solution for revocation of a licence. If any of the committee members today were on that committee, then you'll likely remember how poor and disappointing the explanations given by Miss Whitby were. She was naive around the workings of the store, wanted to give a problematic seller more responsibility at the shop, despite her admitting he had been inappropriate towards the vulnerable customers. Also tellingly, she pledged that things would change after the hearing. Now, this struck me as wholly negligent, as she had a number of things to put things right ahead of the failed, uh, following the failed test purchase. It appeared that this was a knee-jerk reaction to try and satisfy committee members not to revoke the licence. As for my earlier point, she's been involved with the store since 2017, been there during two failed test purchases and arguably has been responsible for the problems encountered, with the actual DPS and PLH being wholly absent. Uh, Ms Rigby is also the partner of uh, Shamray's Ansar. Uh, the family have a number of off licences across Burnley and Pendle. Uh, one of the stores linked to the Ansar family in Burnley was taken to a review here in January 2018 from the road sales and illicit tobacco. At another store in Burnley, a licensing volunteer who is a civilian and does it in his own time, carried out an inspection and was intimidated by Mr. Ramsar, who was aggressive towards him and barred the store. Now, to further add to the strange situation we have here, the license holder, the same, was also a license holder in DPS at a store in Burnley, which failed a test purchase on the same evening as the shop at Knotts Lane, which Mr. McConnell referred to. And this is showing a worrying trend for me for these family linked stores. I spoke with him saying in the days after these failed test purchases to discuss the matter. She seemed disinterested, offered no solutions, and I informed her that a review of the licenses at both stores were likely. 
Although Mr. Sain appealed the decision of Burnley Borough Council to revoke the licence uh, at the Burnley store, she didn't turn up at the, at the, the appeal hearing and the appeal was dismissed. Again, sadly, one of my perceived laws of the licence is that what these stores can carry on selling alcohol right up to the 11th hour with no sanction during this period. Indeed, there were others involved uh, in this area who were historically in linked to the Knox Lane store, which just shows the level of confusion being created and the close links to all parties being mentioned for a very long time. Coincidentally, Ms Rigby had an involvement with this Burnley store too, as far back as 2012 when she was on some silver and DPS there at the our innkeeper system. So when staff at the store were asked who management were, they were unsure, and herein lies one of the problems. To me, it appears that management, DPS and licence holders wish to remain at arm's length when it suits or are wholly involved when it suits. Now, I don't know what is happening in these stores. I would ask, is it negligence and poor communication or is it deliberate confusion created to make enforcement and compliance as difficult as possible? So I feel to grant this application would be to undermine the decision of the committee decision at the review hearing in January 2020. Ms. Rigby clearly told the committee that she took responsibility for the Sorry. Ms. Rigby clearly told the committee that she took responsibility for the failures of the store, and yet she had not resolved to practically improve this situation in the gap between fell test purchase and hearing. One of the improvements she suggested was to give the seller more responsibility at the store, despite admitting his inappropriate behaviour at the past and these concerns that we had. So Ms Rigby and Mr Lawson will have their say to show that she can be a responsible seller of alcohol and licence holder. However, I still have serious reservations, as I've just explained. Uh, I'm struggling to see how this licence uh, application is relevant when the st store still has a licence in place. If the appeal hearing has gone ahead last week, we'd be in a clear, clearer position now, uh, but it didn't. And this whole situation is unusual. So thank you very much. I've not been more to add. Thank you, Mr Hennigan. Um, have trading standards any questions for Mr Hennigan? No. Uh, right. At this stage, uh, have councillors any questions for Mr Hennigan? Mr Lawson. Yes, I've quite a few councillors, you'd not be surprised to hear. Um, first of all, can I just clarify for the committee that again, we're delving into areas that we ought not to have delved into. The representations by Mr Hennigan have been deemed inappropriate so far as the previous proceedings. Would you agree, Mr Hennigan, that this is a de novo fresh hearing? We are entitled to consider the application afresh on its merits today? Absolutely, but obviously... It was uh, a simple concerned. question. It was a simple question. We are entitled to it, are we not? That's what the legal rep, rep said yes, earlier. it is. Yeah. Moving on, uh, you've seen some documents presented on behalf of Miss Rigby. Uh, have you dealt with Mr. R Miss Rigby over the years on many occasions? Not myself, no, my, my, my predecessor, Sergeant Middleton, will, will have, uh, but with my uh, first and only dealing with Miss Rigby was at the review hearing. Right, so consequently, have you seen the um, responsibility she's held over the years, the documents that's been submitted today? I haven't seen the documents submitted today. Uh, I've seen the application which came in for uh, this store, but I haven't seen any subsequent paperwork in terms of uh, what has been already mentioned. Uh, you would be aware of any licensing issues, though, that Miss Rigby has had over the years, wouldn't you, from your forces intelligence? Uh, for what we have on the system and, and what I know. So there's nothing on the system regarding Miss Rigby? Uh, I think I've already explained there was uh, stuff on the system regarding yes. Miss Rigby being linked to this store and well, can this I... store in Burnley. Are you aware that she uh, held? Other, other are, you, are you aware that she held um, the DPS at Anglesey Avenue in four, uh, Burnley for four years? I'm aware she had. Uh, she was involved with that story. Yeah, I don't know the, the time period. And are you aware that there were no licensing issues under Jenny Ribby's guidance? 
Uh, I'm, I've got a full employee, to be honest, Mr. Wilson. Uh, right. Uh, okay. Uh, that was uh, had to be a licensed revocation for the illicit tobacco. I don't know if uh, Ms. Rippey no. was involved at the that time. Well, I can tell you there were no licensing issues while she ran that store for four years. You've mentioned you've mentioned Lindhurst Road. There've been problems with the Lindhurst Road license, haven't there? Yeah. Yeah. Are you aware that she ran those premises from 2012 to 2014? Uh, I knew she was uh, running it in 2012. I don't know, I don't know when the, uh, her involvement ended. 2014. Are you aware yeah. any of, of any licensing issues while she ran that store? Uh, not, uh, not as far as I'm aware. No. Are you aware that your predecessor, um, Jason Middleton, who you've made reference to, in fact, praised the running of that store. No, I was unaware of that. No. Were you aware that she ran a store in Padium, Church Street, from September 2015 until the summer of 2020? No, I was unaware of that one. But you'd have some responsibility for all that area, wouldn't you? I do, yes. Uh, but uh, with quite a number of uh, licensed premises and I cover the whole of East Lancashire. Uh, yeah. I couldn't tell you who's was involved at any particular time. No, but you'd be aware of any licensing issues, wouldn't you? If it came to your attention. Well, possibly. So, so, some I was, some I wasn't because it's a, it's a busy role. And mm. where, well, I can tell you... we're going, it's a difficult one to say. Okay. Well, it's not that difficult because there's no licensing issues there, Mr. Hennigan. And okay. were you aware that she ran uh, the supermarket at Cog Lane for the best part of two and a half years? I may have heard of Cog Lane, but uh, I couldn't say with uh, certainty. Right. Well, it'll be no surprise to you that there were no licensing issues there either. Now, in respect of the hearing that you've mentioned that we've decided is inappropriate, but in respect to the review hearing, did you make any notes of that hearing? A review hearing, uh, I, I made some, some notes, but right. not comprehensive notes. No, because there's some confusion over what was said by Miss Rigby, because we can't refer to the notes, but you appear to have conceded today that she may have mentioned she was an admin assistant. Uh, I, I said that because that was uh, your words, Mr. Lawson. <clears throat> well, you conceded that that was something she may have said. I'm, I'm just referring to what you said because that's what I said when I when I gave my presentation. I referred to yourself as referring to her as that administrative assistant. Who is responsible for the running of the premises at Knotts Lane? Which person should be responsible? for the carrying out the licensing objectives? Ultimately, the DPS. Right. Was Jenna Rigby the DPS at the time of the review? No, she wasn't. No. And have you seen the proposed conditions that she suggested with regard in the to, in the application? Yeah, from the application, yes, I've seen, I've seen the application, yes. Uh, why is it those pro proposed con conditions aren't suitable to allow her to run the premises as DPS? It's, uh, I think it's, well, it's my concerns over uh, Ms Rigby's involvement and the stuff that's happened already that I have raised, that conditions are, are fine to a point, and this is for the committee to, to uh, decide that. But ultimately, uh, I have concerns around the protection of children uh, at, at this venue, you know, could have all the, the, the best conditions in, in the world, but it, it's, it wouldn't necessarily address my concerns at this stage. Um, over the last 15 months or so as licensing officer, you haven't just ignored what's been going on at Knotts Lane, have you? Uh, no, no. Because you've attended various hearings and you've spoken to various people, responsible authorities, and listened to various representations, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, you're aware that the care home manager has 
not had or reported any concerns about the running of that shop over the last 15 months, aren't you? Uh, to, uh, to me, anyway, yeah. Uh, you, it's one of my colleagues that has uh, more involvement being the community manager for that area. But, but you're aware, aren't you, that there are no concerns from the care home manager? There haven't been any reported concerns? Uh, yeah. Thank you. I have no further questions, councillors. OK, thank you, Mr Lawson. Uh, councillors, has any other questions for Mr Hennigan before I move on? Could I ask a question, please, Chair? Uh, yes. Mr Lawson, you re just read out a, a number of different premises there, um, and I wasn't aware of these premises, or else I might have been able to do some checks to see if we'd had any problems with them. Um, so, I mean, if it's okay for you to sort of say to us that there were no pro uh, problems, but I, I don't expect you to remember every single client that you have on your books and the detail of that. So it would be it would have been interesting if we'd have got the details of those premises pre previous to this, um, this hearing, so we could have done those checks and been clear and confirm, as you say, or not, that there were no issues. I totally agree with you, Mr. McConnell. You could have quite easily checked Miss Rigby's past experience in running stores. It's not for me to do that. It's for the relevant representations to be made by the responsible authorities. So I don't know where you're going with your representation or question in that regard. Okay, am I okay now to move on and ask if there are any other objectors who want to put put their case? Any committee members got any questions before we move on? Right. Um, I believe next it's it's the turn of uh, the uh, license holder to present their case. Am I correct there, uh, Miss Keating? Yes, you are, Chair. Right. So, uh, are you not going to put the case, Mr. Lawson? I am, Chair. Right. Okay. Would you like to proceed then? Thank you. Uh, Councillors, you've you've now seen the application. I. I, I uh, Submit. I, I understand you have rather, and um, seen the proposed conditions and, more importantly, the representations that Mr. Rig Miss Rigby has made in respect of how she's going to promote the the four licensing objectives. Can I confirm that is the case, please? Um, in reality, the objection is on the protection of children from harm. It can only be because that is the representation that you've heard from Mr McConnell and indeed that you've heard from the licensing officer. Clearly, um, there is a concern about crime and disorder, but it's not suggested in reality that that is a principal area of concern or uh, a concern in respect to the running of these premises. Because as you've heard, uh, the objections refer to these test purchases and incidents that occur in uh, March 17, 6th of March 17, 13th of March 17, and the 17th of June 2019. And more latterly, I, I'll concede it may be in October 2019. The applicant, Miss Rigby, has a right to make an application, we've established that, for a new premises license. As the history has been mentioned, and so that you're not prejudiced by it, it's, it's helpful to go back to what occurred. And that is, there was a review hearing before Penderborough Council some 15 months ago or there or thereabouts. It has to be accepted that, that at that review hearing that Miss Rigby attended and made representations. You've seen some documentation today as to why she attended because within that documentation there is a death certificate and that is relating to a relative of Sara Hussain. You've also seen within the documentation that has been submitted today, a P60 confirming 
her wages from Knott's Lane store. And you've heard the representations that she was involved in an administrative role, performing such things as paying staff wages, being there in an advisory capacity if necessary. You've heard that since the revocation took place, and it's unfortunate, extremely unfortunate, that there are no notes in support of that, that review hearing, that that necessitated Miss Rigby joining herself into these proceedings, going before the magistrates and making a fresh application. Mr Hennigan, Ms McConnell, seemed to put some a portion, some of the blame on the pandemic, but it is the case that Miss Rigby has made the relevant applications. But more importantly, as you've heard, since these applications have been submitted, there hasn't been one incident of concern expressed in relation to how those premises are being run. Save and except for Mr Hennigan suggesting that Brad Jonas is still involved in those premises. Mr Jonas has been put through uh, a personal licence application. He successfully completed an examination to become a personal licence holder. That involves specific training and guidance from Miss Rigby, who has taken over the management of those premises. He has been told in no uncertain terms that if there are, is a repeat of any uh, suggestion of underage sales, be it cigarettes or, or alcohol, that he will be removed. He's been given one final opportunity. That's not to say that if councillors determine that he should have no involvement, that she will give an undertaking that he won't be involved. But he was a young man who was naive and perhaps under the direction of a previous DPS and premises licence holder at the material time. Since then, as I say, he's passed his examinations. But more importantly, on behalf of the applicant, there have been no concerns by any responsible authority or no relevant representations by any member of the public. Moreover, what you have is someone, i.e. Miss Rigby, who has shown uh, a hands-on role in, with regard to the running of these premises. You've seen since uh, the revocation, she is engaged with the care home manager, Miss Lisa Baxter. Lisa Baxter has, uh, has confirmed that she has no concerns now with regard to the running of the premises. And indeed, Miss Rigby has arranged meetings with her to ensure that there is no repeat and has provided her contact details and reference for contact if there are any concerns. In my respectful submission, these objections are bordering on frivolous and vexatious due to the fact that 15 months have elapsed and there have been no problems. Furthermore, the applicant has demonstrated that she is managing the premises very well. The suggestion that she has simply shouldn't enter into an agreement with Serve Legal, who provide a service level agreement to add on to the checks that she suggested in the conditions in a license, is nothing more than ludicrous because they attend ad hoc without notice to ensure that the licensing objectives, objectives are being complied with. And in the event that they are not, then there is a record, a detailed record kept of any passes or failures in that regard. That is someone who is responsible in my respectful submission. The applicant has demonstrated within the application as to the steps she's taken place that have been suggested by Mr McConnell in respect of the conditions that he would have suggested at the time of the review hearing, notwithstanding the problems in March 17, June 17, October 19, by the DPS at the time. It's the DPS's responsibility, and that's a, a fact accepted by Ms. Rib, being demonstrated by the fact there's been no concerns for the last 15 months. So this is, this is, this is an application that should be granted, in my respectful submission, with the appropriate safeguards in place. And it's telling, is it not, councillors, that Mr McConnell or Mr Hennigan have not mentioned that under the Licensing, licensing Act, there is an enduring power of review. If there is a, a snip of information that Knott's Lane is causing concerns, then the licensing officer, notwithstanding he has a lot of premises to look after, can apply for a licensing review. Mr McConnell of Trading Standards 
can apply for review at any time. That can be quarterly, six monthly, yearly. There is no prohibi uh, nothing prohibited in the Licensing Act to prevent the enduring powers of review. You've heard that Miss Rigby has run stores since 2012. You've heard that there have been no licensing issues in any of those stores. You've seen documents confirming that when she has run stores, there have been test purchases and they have, she has successfully uh, adhered to the licensing objectives. You've heard that a predecessor of Mr. Hennigan, he preys on Miss Rigby for the way she ran these premises. And to suggest that the licensing officer for the area is not aware of anything relating to Miss Rigby is, in my respectful submission, disingenuous, because if he had have heard anything, then it would have been presented to you today. So for all those reasons, your worships, as your councillors, rather, I'm going back to magistrates, councillors, there is no reason whatsoever for this application not to be granted. And I go back to the point, there is always the power of review. You put trust in her, and if he, she fails, then you can bring it back for review, or the license officer, trading standards, or any relevant authority. Clearly, there hasn't been any concerns in the last 15 months. If there had, you would have heard about them. And for that reason, I ask you to grant the application. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lawson. Um, Mr. McConnell, have you any questions for Mr. Lawson? Yeah, I'm interested in the conversations and meetings that um, with Miss Baxter from the Children's Home. Have have we got any details of those? Yeah, she should have had them. They've been right. they've been okay. they've been served once again. Thank you. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Chair. Just sorry, a carry on, Mr. McConnell. Um, yeah, I think the, the difficulty I have as far as review and mentioning reviews as Mr Lawson has um, emphasised is that we're playing with uh, potentially playing with child protection here and the health and well-being of young people. Um, Brad Jonas despite or regard, uh, regardless of him going through training etc by Jenna Rigby's own admission acted inappropriately toward young girls. Um, is this a question for me, Mr. O'Connell, or is it further representations? No, I'm, I'm asking you what, why you think that uh, you, you're okay with, yeah, we might get a review after three months, but Brad Jonas is still there. And as far as I'm concerned, there is a threat to young girls, as far as he, given his previous behaviour, his inappropriate behaviour, admitted by Jenna, uh, Jenna Rigby. Well, we're delving into things that we are perhaps ought not, ought not to, because are you aware of specifics? I'm not, but colleagues are. But right. I, I, well, I, I, again, I get, again, obviously, you, 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 you mentioned respect, Brad Mr. McConnell. You, you brought with him respect, up. Your, you, your, you brought him up. Well, I did. I did bring it. I did bring up Brad Jonas, and I told you what what steps have been taking place since then, such as him obtaining his qualification, such as him being given words of advice, such as the premises being managed properly. And that may be the importance to, that you're applying to Brad, Brad uh, right. uh, Jones I don't, I don't being able to run the, property, run the premises. Well, to suggest that a review of the premises, of the premises license is inappropriate, flies in the face of the licensing act. I'm not saying a review is inappropriate. I'm saying... Uh, again, I think... I'm not sure how we're taking this. I have no further questions, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr Hennigan, have you got any questions for Mr Lawson at this stage? Yes, uh, Mr Lawson, obviously during my representation I made reference to an innkeeper uh, point about uh, Jenna Rigby being the manager of the store as far back as March 2017. Is this, is this the case to your understanding? Well, I've made representations about her involvement in the store and I've told you that uh, she had an administrative role in it. That's accepted. But the management... I, 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 sorry, manager. I, I don't... I didn't finish. But the management of the premises, I thought I dealt with in my representations, that the overall management of the premises and the function of a DPS or a personal license holder is to manage the premises. There has been some management, but not in respect to the licensing objectives. But you... Can, can you have a manager and a DPS at a store? I suggest you can. 
you can have a DPS who's responsible for the day-to-day running, but also have a manager working underneath. Right. I, I thought I've dealt with the, what role she performed. Okay. So, so effectively now, what you were suggesting is that, you, that she is she is now the DPS and effectively she's going to be the manager. So, yes, I would agree with you that you can have that role now. Yes. Because the overall responsibility week. for the running of the premises, as I say, lies with the designated premises supervisor. But staff also need uh, a degree of responsibility when it comes to the sale of alcohol. Would I be wrong in saying that? No, I wholeheartedly agree. And um, the evidence suggests that she has put those steps in place. Okay. So since March 2017, has Ms Rigby been the manager of this store? She's in, she has been involved in an administrative capacity. She has paid wages. There has been ordering of goods. That's I thought thought we'd made that clear. I just wanted to clarify it because we've got an issue. That we, what we have is concerns whether she's a manager, admin assistant, what her what her role is. We have it on our documents that she was manager back in uh, March 2017. What I'm suggesting is uh, Miss Rigby has had some responsibility during this period of time for the responsible sale of alcohol, regardless. So are you suggesting she's not a fit and proper person then? I, we've obviously put an objection in. So uh, we've got concerns. We, we have concerns. Well, I've mentioned that the, uh, the managerial role as DPS that she's undertaken in respect of all those premises, we, you, weren't, you clearly weren't aware of those. Not all of them, no. Well, you didn't appear to be aware of any of them. Well, I think I think I clarified which ones I did know about and the right. ones that I was unsure about. Right. Well, would you accept then that the licensing objectives have been upheld in those with regard to those premises? Poss- poss- possibly. I I don't I don't know. It, it's hard to say if they're being upheld when when you're not visiting them all the time. Well, nothing further to add. Mm. Further questions, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hennigan. Uh, are there any other uh, bodies wanting to ask questions before I, I go on to ask members if they want to ask questions? Is it worth uh, just clarifying? I know my um, licensing officer, Mr. Iqbal, did ask if everyone had received a copy of the. Not, we, oh no, we've got a copy of the service level agreement with the private company that are doing the checks. But um, Mr. Lawson um, referred to a successful test recently, and Mr. Iqbal asked if everyone's got a copy of that. Can we just flag that up to members so we can see it? I'm not sure whereabouts in the documentation that is. I think it came in the other yesterday or the day before. Is that right, Mr. Lawson? We could just flag that I up. Think to the I, I think it did. I think it forms part of the documentation that was uh, ongoing in respect of other matters as well. Um, it's it's I, a, I, a serve a serve le- I can hold it up. It's a serve legal, but I can if it's not within, I can forward it on. It's a serve legal document. A visit to the Premier, Cotton Mill, on twenty fifty five. Uh, twenty fifty five on the tenth of March was a pass. Um. Please, please accurately describe, describe the staff member who served you. What was the name of the staff member? Was there any generic under 25 think, 25 material, etc.? Hello, Samba. We have, I have seen that uh, it's on page 10, but obviously there's no um, letterhead or logo well, on that, this. No, that, that's, that's from, sorry, that is from Serve Legal when there's a service agreement that has been submitted no no we've seen the service level agreement the the actual report you're referring to on 10th of march when the visit was done um there's obviously it's it's a report but obviously there's no letterhead to it right to say who it's from right i'm not sure where i that's it i can make inquiries and get a statement if you like but uh, there is a service service user agreement. 
I know, but it's just that the report that you've submitted this morning um, to the committee, ideally for future reference, um, it would be ideal if they had a, a logo on or to say who's done. I'll go back to uh, serve legal with that, but I can't do anything about how they present their evidence. All I can tell you is there is a service level agreement that she has entered into. Yeah, I've seen the service level agreement. Yeah. It's just this report. It's got no logo on it or et cetera. You know, no, that. no, but she pays for a service that that includes ad hoc visits. Yeah, but we don't know who's done this visit. All it is a report, uh, which I'm looking at. Yeah. Can I just clarify, Chair, have all members got a copy of that? I just want to make sure that members have got it so that you can see what we're talking about. Members got a copy or have seen this document. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. Uh, so now I could go on to uh, ask members if they have any questions for Mr. Lawson. If you've got a burning issue, now's your chance to, to ask. Uh, if there are no questions, then uh, each party will, will give a brief sum, summing up of uh, the case that they've put forward, uh, starting with Mr. McConnell. Good. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I still have concerns in relation to Brad Jones working at the shop as far as the uh, protection, uh, uh, the well, health and well-being of young people is concerned. Yes, he's been put through um, whatever course, the, the premises licence holder, training, etc. Um, but his, his behaviour toward young girls at that time was um, inappropriate as a minimum and verging on, um, well, it, it was inappropriate as a minimum. Um, that's what's concerning me. Um, I accept that uh, Mr Rigby has put in um, an extensive list of um, additions to the licence, which is fine. However, this always seems to happen knee-jerk. Every when it gets to crisis point, Mrs. Ms. Rigby will put in some um, uh, um, rationale to, uh, or, or some actions will be taken. Now, ultimately, what you've got to remember is all those conditions are basically, nearly all those conditions are basically what she should be doing anyway as a license, or what she would have been doing anyway as a license holder, CCTV, refusals, records, etc. So that that's basically my. My summing up, it's the child protection and the health and well-being um, issue that still uh, is a, a big concern to me uh, in relation to this application. Okay, thank you, Mr. McConnell. Uh, Mr. Hennigan, could you do your summing up? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, regardless of what we have heard, heard today, uh, still have concerns about Ms. Rigby's uh, credentials. Uh, and suitability and therefore the application. There was a genuine need for the licence to be reviewed last January uh, and I feel the correct outcome was reached there. If the licence is granted today, uh, I believe we'll, we will encounter the same, same problems uh, being experienced at, at this store and others as we just seem to be going around in circles uh, in terms of who is actually responsible for the running of the premises. 
Uh, even staff members at stores seem to be confused about who's running the shops. Uh, enough is enough for me. Uh, is it simply colour management or more worryingly subterfuge? Uh, Ms. Rabi has been involved with this store for several years uh, and I, I believe is therefore culpable for the issues encountered. Uh, because of this, I'd respect the subcommittee to seriously consider all the options available uh, and whatever happens today, uh, I'll respect the decision made by the committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr Lawson, would you sum up please? Yes, you'll be here to uh, glad to hear that my summing up is not going to be as long as I previously uh, went on about. Um, very briefly, Mr. Hennigan appears to have support, uh, and Mr. McConnell uh, appears to have supported what's gone on since Miss Rigby has taken over the premises, and su to suggest that she's adhered to the conditions and abided by them, um, and in some way turn it against her is totally wrong. Um, Mr. Hennigan refers to her, cred her credentials. Well, you can see her credentials. She's ran, ran premise after premise without any problem whatsoever. And if you had heard about those problems, I repeat, you would have heard about you. You, you would have uh, they would have been entitled to make relevant representations. Regarding Brad Jonas, he was 19 at the time of these offences, uh, 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 misdemeanors, if we can put it that way. He's now 21, and he's. Com successfully completed an application. You might argue that she's taken a responsible view, pulled him up and told him that he will not have a future if he doesn't adhere to the licensing objectives. She's told him that. I've told you that in my representations. She's given him one final opportunity. And it's telling, is it not, there's been no further problems over the last 15 months. So in my respectful submission, as I said, there are no grounds to believe that the licensing objectives will not be upheld but even if that is the case, and, and notwithstanding that, there is always the enduring power of view. And that's why I say the application should be granted. OK, thank you. Uh, well, now it's up to the councillors to uh, leave the meeting whilst we discuss in private uh, and come to a decision. So could council councillors uh, please leave this meeting?
Okay, we'll add now, Chairman. All right, thank you. Right, uh, we've considered the, the matter and we've decided to grant the application uh, subject to all the conditions suggested. Oh, sorry, Mr. Carter's still wanting to come in. I'll start again. Yeah. Well, back. Uh, we've decided to grant the application um, subject to all the conditions that uh, Miss Rigby has laid out in the application, plus all the applic the um, the ones that are in the trading standards uh, report, and we feel it covers all four of, uh, of the. Uh, Rec uh, numbers one to four of all the uh, licensing objectives. Uh, that is the decision of the committee. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right, and the meeting's now closed. <laughs>